In this video, we'll look at using the Samsung Z Fold phone as a monitor for your camera. In this case, we're looking at using it with a Sony camera such as the A7S III, but there are other apps available that you can use with other brands than Sony, for example, Canon. You can use the approach that I'll show on any Android phone or iPhone as the two apps that I'll be looking at are available on both platforms but I'm showing the Samsung Z Fold because of the incredible size of the screen when it's unfolded. We're going to be looking at the apps that you can use, that's the Monitor Plus app and the Sony Monitor and Control app, the pros and cons of using your phone as a monitor, the connection options, whether you connect it up with cable or Wi-Fi, including a quick look at any lag that occurs with each connection method. And I'll show you the mount that I'm using to put my Samsung Z Fold unfolded onto the camera. But I plan to go into more detail on each of these topics, including a comparison of Monitor Plus against the Sony app and a more detailed measurement of the video lag with each of the connection methods. So therefore subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more on these topics. So let's get started. The two apps that I'm comparing are the Monitor Plus app. It's a third party app that supports the most recent Sony cameras. There's a free version that will enable you to try it out, but to get the advanced features, you'll need to buy the full version, which is still under $20 in the US, so it's not a big investment. The Sony app is called Monitor and Control and is part of the Creators Cloud, so you'll need an account, but other than that, as I understand it, the app is free to users of Sony cameras. Both apps include a large range of features such as USB or Wi-Fi connection, live view, histogram, false color, zebras, custom LUTs, camera remote control of shutter speed, aperture, ISO and other adjustments. They can change the focus modes and move the focus point around and set the tracking point as you would on your LCD screen. A full comparison of all the features is beyond the scope of what we can cover in this overview, but suffice it to say that the features compete well with and may exceed the capability of many dedicated camera monitors. So let's have a look at the pros and cons in comparison to a dedicated monitor. Firstly, the pros. Firstly, and most obviously, there is the cost. These apps range from free to $20, while dedicated monitors range from about $150 for the cheapest to around $1,000. So maybe using your phone would at least give you the opportunity to try and see how you could benefit from a camera monitor. Secondly, there is the size and the brightness. The Z Fold has a 7.6 inch amyloid screen with pixel dimensions of 1812 by 2176. The Z Fold 5's brightness is 1750 nits and the 6 is an incredible 2600 nits. This makes them great for outdoor use. Weight is also an advantage as the phone, including its mount, will weigh much less than most monitors when you include the larger batteries that they use. Being able to use either USB or Wi-Fi connection means that they are easy to use and this brings on the final positive point which is that you can sit the phone beside you when you're doing a piece to camera and get the framing just right, control all the settings and then start and stop the recording as you need. It's very convenient. And now for some of the cons. There's undoubtedly some risk to using an expensive phone mounted on your camera, depending on the shooting situation. The mount is unlikely to be as secure as the mounting for a dedicated monitor. And then there's the inconvenience of not having your phone available for calls, messages, notes, or even worse, getting a call in the middle of filming an important shot. Finally, the battery will not power you for as long as a dedicated monitor, especially when you consider that you can swap the batteries on most monitors. On balance, I would say that the dedicated monitor would be best for serious professional work, but the phone is a great solution 
for short shooting situations and has many advantages for the amateur. Let's briefly look at the connection and associated lag using these apps. Again, this is worth a video in its own right, but here are my initial findings. I ran the clock app showing hundreds of seconds on my MacBook. The screen only has a refresh of 60 Hz, so this method isn't perfect. I'll need to work out a better method for a more rigorous analysis, but here are my initial findings. The monitor and control app performed slightly better than the Monitor Plus, but both were very acceptable. Monitor and control performed well both on USB and on Wi-Fi. To show you how it looks, here's a side-by-side -side view of the Monitor Plus app connected by Wi-Fi recorded on my phone with the in-camera recording. This is the worst possible of all the combinations I've found, but I must say that it's still fairly usable. Finally, here's the detail on the camera mount that I used. I used the Lee Plumen tripod mount, which cost me £22 in the UK, or it would be $22 in the US. I can include the links in the description, though these are not affiliate links. Because the mount only has the quarter inch tripod mount, I added the small rig cold shoe adapter, which allows me to mount it to my camera or cage, and also to angle the screen just as I need it. So I hope you learned something useful from this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and look out for the upcoming more detailed comparisons in future video darkroom videos.